All right. Um, very simply, uh, wet barrel hydrants is a hydrant that's defined as being full of water or wet inside all the way to the top of the nozzle section, even when the hydrant's not in use. Because they're full of pressurized water, wet barrel hydrants are intended to be installed only in areas with a non-freezing climate. So their primary market is central and southern California. Dry barrel hydrant is defined as being empty of water or dry above the main valve when not in use. A dry barrel hydrant drains out the internal water underground or the internal water is pumped out uh, if the hydrant's plugged uh, so it easily survives the freezing climate. Dry barrel hydrants are marketed all over North America and do include a few customers in Central and Southern California. Valve operation uh, in a wet barrel hydrant, each outlet has its own valve, which is located right here inside the hydrant. Uh, each valve operates independently, so water can be accessed from a second outlet nozzle at any time. So since the disc, the ceiling disc, butts up against the back of the nozzle, if you have this hooked up to a pumper truck and then you need a hose, you can hook the hose up to here and then open the other valve while the hydrant is still in operation with the pumper truck. A dry barrel hydrant has only one main valve located below ground. If the hydrant's operating and a second outlet is needed, the hydrant must be shut down before the second outlet nozzle can be um, accessed. Because of the way they operate, the caps and gaskets between the wet barrel and the dry barrel hydrant are a little bit different. The caps are interchangeable themselves, but the gaskets are different and are not interchangeable. In the wet barrel hydrant, the area behind the cap, between the valve and the cap, has to be vented. So we install this uh, segmented gasket to allow these gaps in between that allow air to move in and out uh, of that area inside the nozzle. On a dry barrel hydrant, you don't want that. You, during the operation, uh, you do not want uh, air being sucked in from the uh, hose nozzles if this happens to be hooked to a pumper truck. And conversely, you don't want water spraying out of these nozzles while the hydrant's in operation. So that's why the two gaskets are different. There are some manufacturers that use the same gasket between a dry barrel and a wet barrel. But on a wet barrel, what they'll do is they'll drill a small hole through the iron of the, of the cap. Purchase costs. Initially, the wet barrel hydrant has a lower purchase cost versus a dry barrel hydrant. However, there are additional costs to complete the installation of a wet barrel hydrant that includes a riser pipe shown here on the left and an optional traffic breakoff device. When installation is complete, you really may not be saving much with the cost between a wet barrel versus a dry barrel hydrant. Now, one thing I want to mention is AVK does not supply the riser pipes for wet barrel hydrants, as there's already quite a few fitting manufacturers that manufacture them. Wet barrels have five different options for installation. Uh, AVK has a breakable flange and spool that allows breakaway and a collision with a car, but does not restrict water flow. We do have our patented AVK FlowGuard 2 shown right here that allows breakaway in a collision and greatly reduces the water flow. Uh, we have on the market, there are available braking mounting bolts. One is shown here that has grooves machined into the shank of the bolt, but there's also some available that the bolt is actually drilled uh, so it's hollow to allow them to break. Uh, hydrants can be protected by bollards or posts that are installed around the hydrant, usually painted yellow, but not always. And then they can also, a um, hydrant can also be installed with no collision feature at all, but that always has a high repair cost after a collision with a car. If the wet barrel hydrant is not installed with a water flow restricting device, then the water department runs a risk of a huge loss of water in case the hydrant is hit by a car. After the hydrant is broken off, the water will continue to flow until the water department arrives and is able to turn off the isolation gate valve. So you can see this happened in Orange, California, Orange County, California. This is our FlowGuard 2 um, breakaway device. It has a sinking ball, so when water is not moving, 
through the hydrant, this ball sinks and lands on a seat in the bottom, which prevents anybody from closing the isolation valve, pouring any kind of poison into the system. Under normal operation, you open the hydrant, water begins to flow. The water flow pushes this ball up against this retainer cage, and the water flows around the ball through these openings and out and through the hydrant. If the hydrant's hit by a car, there's a breakable flange that hooks underneath this lip that fractures and breaks away. Once the hydrant is broken away, this retainer cage is able to move out, and this ball moves farther upward and actually seals against a seat in the top part of the housing. A dry barrel hydrant, all modern dry barrel hydrants, are equipped with a traffic breakable flange and a breakable stem coupler or standard equipment. And typically there is no water loss if the hydrant is broken off during a collision with a car, or in this case, a collision with a truck. Ease of repair. All wet barrel fire hydrant components are above ground where they're easily accessible. So you can see here's the, the operating stem. You turn the dummy nut, retract this disc off of the back of the nozzle, allows water to flow through. So once that, you close the isolation valve to do any repairs on this, you can remove the nozzle, it gives you access to the disc and stem. You can remove the dummy nut, remove the stem nut on this side for repair of, of the O-rings. So all of the valves, all the operating mechanisms are above ground on a dry, I'm sorry, a wet barrel hydrant. Dry barrel hydrant, main valve is buried far below ground. It's still easily accessible, but it does take a bit more effort to make a repair on a dry barrel hydrant. And a dry barrel hydrant has a lubrication chamber in the top filled with either oil or grease. It has to be checked and maintained every few years. Outlet nozzles, wet barrel hydrants today from AVK use a thread in nozzle. Uh, the back of the nozzle is the seat for the closing disc. Uh, dry barrel hydrants use a bayonet style nozzle. Now, long ago, many hydrant manufacturers poured melted lead around the outlet nozzles to lock them in place within the hydrant body. And as we all know, the last 50 or 60 years have seen major changes to our lead contamination laws. For a dry barrel hydrant, this is not normally a problem, but today, because they are in constant contact with water in a pipe system, a lead containing wet barrel hydrant could expose the drinking water to a source of lead contamination. Therefore, many water districts are removing their older wet barrel hydrants and replacing them. Now, speaking of older wet barrel hydrants, that leads us to our first trivia question of the day. Most of the wet barrel fire hydrants that were installed in San Francisco between 1880 and 1947 had a large iron ball cast onto the top cover of the hydrant. Many of these ball top wet barrel hydrants are still in existence today in the city's water system. And the question is, what was the purpose of the ball? Anybody have any clues? And Mark, you're gonna have to tell me because I can't see the chat list. Just put your answer, just type your answer into the chat. Nobody? I think you stumped them, Randy. Okay. Well, the purpose of the ball, when the fire department arrived at the scene of a fire with the horse-drawn pumper wagon, the ball on top of the hydrant provided a place for the firemen to tie up their horses so they wouldn't wander off while the firefighters battled the blaze. Now we've got a second trivia question. Since we stumped them with the first one, I doubt anybody's going to get this one. The city of San Francisco paints all the hydrants in their system white except one, which is painted gold. Why is this one hydrant painted gold? No, I think you still stumped them with that. That's probably pretty good. Okay. Rich said the yeah, only meant. people on the West Coast would probably. But... <laughs> good guess. No. After. After the 1906 earthquake, there was only one fire hydrant in the Mission District of San Francisco that survived the quake and still provided water to help fight fires that occurred after the quake. To honor this hydrant, the fire department holds a ceremony every year on the anniversary of the quake and gives the fire hydrant another coat of gold paint. All right, now when I was uh, putting together this presentation, I stumbled across this. 
where it says horses have a speed limit of 10 miles an hour, no pooping, fully understandable, but no eating fire hydrants. I don't have an answer for this other than the only thing I could think of was it could be left over from the days when hydrants were enclosed in a wooden housing to resist freezing. I know horses will chew on wood, but I can't imagine a horse chewing on metal. Does anybody, because I don't have an answer for it, does anybody have an idea? Yeah, Randy, I think from? you're correct. I was looking online, and the only answer I could come up with was the same thing, that the, the housings used to be wood, and if they tied the horses up to them, they would start to chew on them, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay, here's our contact information if you have any questions or comments. Or need further information on our products, uh, you can contact me at the phone number or email address or Mark Tompkins at the email address. And we're also adding our uh, 